A very wise man once said, keep your eyes on the road, your hands upon the wheel. Today, I am going to demystify SDR, and I'm going to show you my new toy, this very inexpensive SDR USB dongle. And I'm sharing this with you today because I, for a long time, wanted to try SDR, but while doing my research online, it looked very confusing and frightening. But because the only thing we have to fear is fear itself and spiders, I manned up. I put on my big boy panties and decided to face my fears. In this video, I'm not going to waste your time and define what SDR is or what it does or why it does what it does. That's what the experts are for. I could do that, but that would be very boring. And this is not a how-to video of how to install the software and how to install the drivers and because that too would be very boring very boring. There's a million other boring videos out there showing you how to do all of that. Instead, this will be a very high level overview showing you how easy it can be to get started in SDR. I'll show you how it works. I'll give you the basics and I will give a demonstration so that you can also get over your fears of SDR. But I can't help you with the spiders. This is the SDR dongle that I got. It's a small USB. Actually, for a USB device, it is fairly large. It's about the size of a thumb drive, a little bit larger. It has a USB connector on one side and a small SMA antenna connector on the other side. This particular one is from rtlsdr.com. This seems to be the most popular one. You can get the real thing, the real deal, not some cheap Chinese knockoff for only $29 on Amazon. affiliate link below. And rtl-com.sdr, whoever makes this did not send me this. I paid for this with my own allowance. So allow me to begin with the demystification of SDR so that you too can see how easy it is and enter the exciting world of SDR. So to get started in the exciting world of SDR, you need a few things. The most important one being the SDR dongle itself. This is basically a small radio receiver that plugs into your computer via USB and translates the analog airwave electricities into digital electricities that your computer can understand and then display upon your screen or output through your speaker. In addition to the dongle, you need the drivers that allow your computer to talk to the dongle. Mine, when I ordered it, did not come with any drivers or software or anything. We'll talk about that in a second. And you will need an SDR program software to run on your computer. Dongle, drivers, software, antenna. It's very simple. So after you purchase your dongle, affiliate link below, you then need to configure the drivers so that your computer can talk to the dongle. If you're using a Mac to set up the drivers so that the computer can talk to the dongle, all you do is plug it in for Windows. If you're using a Windows computer, I have read that installing the drivers can be a pain, but the people that make the most popular software, I'll talk more about the software in a minute, all have step-by-step -step guides on their website of how you download and update the drivers and deal with it in Windows. Again, if you have a Mac, just plug it in. It just works. So after installing the drivers on a Mac by simply plugging the device in or on Windows by jumping through a bunch of hoops, you then need to get some software. There are many software packages out there for SDR that are free. You could buy one, but why? The two most popular ones that I found are SDR Sharp, and that runs on Windows and Linux, and Cubic SDR, that runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac. I chose Cubic SDR because it runs on a Mac and it's prettier. So to recap where we are so far in the demystification process, dongle, drivers, software. Everything is free except for the dongle, and that's 29 bucks. Affiliate link below. Now the dongle itself, this particular one, the $29 one, affiliate link below, can receive anything from about 500 kilohertz up to 1.7 gigahertz. That means this thing can receive everything. CB radio, GMRS, MERS, HAM, NOAA, cell phones, baby monitors, key fobs, garage door openers, tow trucks, 
satellites, astronauts, it can receive a lot. It can receive digital signals like P25 or DMR, but it doesn't decode them. So you can hear digital transmissions, but to actually understand them, you need a decoder plugged into whatever software you're using. I'm not gonna go over that because that can get more difficult. This is just the demystification process for beginners. And I haven't figured out how to do that yet. So to receive all of these wonderful RF electricities on your new dongle, you will need an antenna. You can use any antenna, but the antenna needs to be tuned for whatever it is you wanna to listen to. For example, CB radio is in the 27 megahertz range. So to listen to CB radio, you would need a CB radio antenna or an antenna that can receive close in that range, in that 27 megahertz range. If you want to listen to GMRS, as I'm gonna show you in this demonstration, you need a GMRS antenna or an antenna that receives in that range. You could use a GMRS antenna and listen to CB, or you could use a CB antenna and try to listen to cell phones but because the frequencies are so far apart, it wouldn't hurt anything, but you probably wouldn't hear what you want to hear. So I am using a small handheld HT antenna. This is a antenna tuned for GMRS. I have a small cable, which has SMA connectors that goes on to the antenna. At the other end of the antenna, I have a male to male SMA adapter, which goes on thusly. And then that screws in to the dongle. Your antenna may be different, so your connectors may be different, but it is very simple. You don't have to be fancy. Plug in an antenna with the correct adapters. You could get fancy and put a big antenna up on the roof, but this is working fine for me. So I've got the antenna connected to my dongle. Allow me to show you, allow me to demonstrate the Cubic SDR software, what it can do and how easy it is to use. Okay, I've got the Cubic SDR software up and running on the screen here. And at first glance, it can be a little bit intimidating. All these fancy looking graphs and colors, but do not be afraid because it's all very simple. So I'm just gonna show you what a few of these things are and what it can do. So I will start from left to right and then down. Show you what all these are and then show you how it works. So over here, we have a tuner gain that increases and decreases the sensitivity of the tuner. Because if you've got it up real high, you're gonna hear a lot of static. If you've got it too low, you won't hear anything. You can see on the graph here, things are changing. I have found that in my situation, it works best at about midway. I usually start with narrow band FM, which is what GMRS is. Down here, you will see the actual signals coming in. This is a range of frequencies across the top here. So you can see right now there's a signal coming in at 462.7. And you'll see here a waterfall. That's what the experts call that, a waterfall. And that shows the signals over time. So it's moving down. As you see this signal here, the more red it is, the stronger it is. You can see this one is pulsing up and down, up and down. And you see that reflected right here that's those pulses as it comes up and down. So this is time going down. You can speed that up or slow it down. And that's just a visual representation of this graph here, which is showing the signals, a visual representation over time. So we have all these signals coming in between the 462 and 463 megahertz range. So if I wanna to listen to one of those signals, I just come down here and you'll see my mouse turns to that little green line. When I click on that, when I click on that, it creates what the software, what this software calls a modem modulator demodulator, which allows you to listen to the signal. And it then shows the sound up here and a zoom in, a zoomed in view of the signal here. I'll try it again with a less irritating signal. When it gets too irritating, you can hit this M button. That will mute it. They're all pretty irritating. Those are digital signals. They might be P25, they might be DMR. I think they're actually my security cameras communicating with each other because they're very strong signals. Something I believe in the house, but I don't know. 
because I can't decode them. I don't know what they actually are. So I have some presets set up over here. These are bookmarks. And you'll see that when I double click it here, it will mark it over here. Okay, so here's my 462700 and I've got a label down here at the bottom, GMRS channel 21. So I'm going to unmute by clicking the unmute button over here. And you see now there's nobody talking, no signal there. You can see here that I've got two selections, two modems. That one was muted. So there's that one. And I can move these up and down. And that's what I'm listening to as I move it up and down. So I'm going to unmute this one. And you can hear all those digital signals. mute that. So there at 463, 576 was somebody talking about something. So let's hear what else they have to say. Four. Are you, are you heading, are you facing south or are you facing north? Secured right now. So let's talk a little bit more about what we're seeing here. I've got this modem, this selection here. Up here, you can see the audio. That's an audio graph, audio visualization of them talking. This is the frequency that they're currently on. This is the bandwidth. The bandwidth is the width that I'm listening to. So I'm going to increase the bandwidth just by, there's a few ways I can do it. I can click here and expand out with my mouse, or I can just click the numbers here. As I go higher in the bandwidth, it's listening to more of the band at one time. Now, when I reduce the bandwidth, it then listens to a more narrow section. Does anybody know what they're doing to this golf course over here off of the 57? Now, that's coming in from this selection. Let me mute that. So, that was the 462700. That's our not a Rubicon Ranchino repeater. So I click on that and that was coming in at a frequency of 462700 and the bandwidth I have set is 10 kilohertz. So now we're listening to two things at once, 462700 and 463576, which is muted. I think he's lost. Okay, so I am going to remove this modem so as not to confuse you i just do that by pressing the d button so now i'm listening to one thing right here this little line here using my mouse button i can scroll up and down and zoom in on that frequency range just a little bit and as i do that you'll see the waterfall kind of spread out or smear across now that i've stopped doing it now the signals have, have readjusted this up in this window, which I have neglected, is a zoomed in view of this down here. So this right there, that selection right there where you see it's lighter colored is this selection right here. So this and this are just the same thing. That one is bigger because bigger is better. Now, while we're waiting for someone else to start talking, let me show you some of these other controls. This was the bandwidth. This is the frequency that I'm at. I can just change the frequency manually just by clicking on it. This is the squelch. So I can raise or lower the squelch so I don't get as much static. So I'm going to unmute it. Yes, I got there. Thank you. Thank goodness he got there. So this is the squelch. So I need to raise it way up there to silence that static. And over here is a volume as well for what we're listening to. Those are the basic controls. Gain over here, type of signal that you're listening to here, and you have to select that and adjust it. Zoomed in view of the waterfall, which is this down here, the selection that you have. 
you can slide across with your modem. That was a digital signal. Lots of digital signals. So I'm just going to open up some of these GMRS channels that I have saved. So I now have multiple modems or selections of frequencies selected. Beautiful. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Appreciate it. Have a good weekend. Not much happening on those other ones. Thank you very much. Uh, same to you. I'm going to clear these by selecting them and hitting the D button to delete those modems. I'm going to zoom out my frequency range by scrolling my mouse here. That zooms in and out. And I'm just going to slide down the frequency and see what I can hear. All right, there's something at 461850. Let's see what they're talking about. Oh, and there's something up here. If I want to get further down the frequency range, I can just drag here across the top. Seems to be a lot of activity right here. Yeah, level two group is getting smaller, it seems. So as you can see, it is not that mysterious. You need a dongle, you need drivers for your dongle, you need software, and you need an antenna. It's all very inexpensive, and using the software is not that mysterious. Just a few different windows. Once you actually read the instructions and learn how to use it, you can enter true radio dorkness. Are you ready to put on your big boy panties?